Hello and welcome to this very first episode of The Loophole, the show where I loop stuff in CG and show you how to do it. So um, today we're going to be looping a smoke simulation in Blender. We're going to do it from uh, start to finish. So let me just first start by creating a base object uh, that we can emit smoke from and the domain and then we'll go from there. So as a base object, I'm just going to grab something kind of small, like a ball or something like that. And let's create our cube here. Scale that up maybe five times. So <clears throat> now I know we have a cube that is uh, 10 units in size, and this is roughly one, one unit in size, a little bit smaller. But that's really all we need to get started. I'm going to throw up a timeline here as well. And I want to create a animation that's, let's say, 150 frames. So I'm going to need about 300, 300 frames uh, of, I guess, material to make sure I can create a loop to begin with. Now, um, I'm using the Blender 2.9 beta. There is a little bit difference if you're using 2.83, but I'll, I'll get to that when we get there. So no worries, if you're using 2.83, you can follow along as well. Now, um, I'm gonna give these names just for clarity. Uh, actually not fluid, but let's call it smoke. Go. And let's call this one emit.smoke. There we go. And I'm gonna save the file as well. So let's go projects. Uh, I'm gonna call this cache LH1. There we go, just so we have something set up. And now in the smoke settings, so first of all, let's create an emitter here. Let's set this to flow and make sure that's set to smoke. And then let's set this to domain and make sure that's set to gas. And immediately you can see if I hit play, we have something that we can work with. Now there's a few things I want to change. First of all, I want to change the um, cache fluid location. Right now it's in its own little weird wonky name folder. I like to just have one that says cache. Um, it's up to you. If you haven't saved the file yet, it's going to throw it in your temporary directory, but I like to just keep things clean. There we go. Now generally I'll be using um, the modular setting and make sure that it's set to resumable. That way I can hit, um, hit bake and then resume it or I can check it. Replay is when you want to just kind of hit spacebar and um, and watch it, uh, I guess, real time sort of generate the, the cache. But unfortunately, I found that um, this sometimes causes some issues where if you update like a force or something, it doesn't always take that into account and they have to fiddle with the settings, which is a little bit annoying. Um, but So right now, if I hit play, nothing's going to happen. I just hit bake data. It's going to bake a couple of frames so you can see what's going on. Right now, I just have the smoke rising, and that's not really what I want. Um, obviously, I want something that is loopable to begin with. So I'm going to free this, and let's set the resolution divisions up to 64, so we have a little bit more to work with and a bit, bit better of a preview. Um, first thing I'm going to do is actually turn off gravity. Why? Well, I want this smoke to sort of puff out all over the place. And um, yeah, to do that, we don't want any gravity. And if we turn off gravity, the smoke will just stop rising. So if I just hit bake data again very quickly, you'll see nothing really happens because there's nothing really affecting the smoke right now. It's just emitting and then staying, staying there because there's nothing going on. So rather than having this uh, be just the geometry, because right now it's just using this, I guess, ball as a geometry for the smoke, I want to use an inflow instead. And that means there's going to be constantly smoke pouring out of this. So you bake the data on this again. Again, just let it run for a few frames. There we go. Um, there's really not much, not much happening still because we're not really affecting it at all. But I know at least now every frame more smoke is supposed to be pouring in and pushing out. So let's refine that a little bit further. So I want to use smoke. I want to use inflow. And let's say I want to have some initial velocity a little bit on the normals. Um, source doesn't really matter in this case because the object isn't moving. So it's not going to copy in velocity from the object. But at least now we have um, some smoke sort of pushing out from the normals. Let's see, I'm going to set the volume emission to one as well. Let's see if that uh, increases anything. And it might still be just nothing, but it's good to set this up properly. There we go. And you might notice uh, while I let this bake for a second that I'm not using adaptive domain. And there's a really good reason for it. Um, 
basically when we're going to load in the cache again later on adaptive domain kind of changes the size of your domain and your cache will jump around all over the place to be able to loop this um, i need one consistent size of cache that i can sort of leave in one place that's why i'm not using adaptive domain now that this we have a couple of frames pushing out now you can actually see what's going on here the smoke is pushing out so we can start kind of working on something cool so let's add in um, some forces to this. And first thing we're going to do is actually add in turbulence. Now let's call this force.turb.big. And I just want to set a few things up, like um, fairly high size. And I've done this a few times, so I'm, I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. Um, yeah, let's start with that. And to push this smoke, uh, actually I want to have it move around a little bit, this turbulence, so to push it back, what I'm going to do is just type in hashtag frame, to set up a driver, and then uh, divide that by, let's say, 30. I'm going to do the same for um, for my rotation here, so do 40, for example. There go, and nothing's going to change, we could have to rebake this, obviously, so let's free rebake this. And again, I'm just going to do a couple of uh, a couple of frames, not everything. Time. Let it run through. There we go. Now you can see it's being affected by the smoke. Now, the only issue is that we have this, um, we have the simulation now, but it just kind of keeps pushing out. And that's because the smoke just keeps coming in as we've set this up as an inflow. Now, to combat this, what I'm going to do is actually turn on the dissolve here. And it automatically removes all the data because it, it uh, sees that something else is up. And rather than set this to slow, I'm going to set this to 150 frames. And to now sort of finish up how to set this up properly, one of the other things I'm going to do is actually set up this flow to use the flow up to frame 150 and then frame 151 and turn, it off, turn this off. There we go. And now basically the ball will emit up until frame 150. And we'll stop emitting in a frame 151. And because we've turned on the dissolve, what's going to happen is whatever remaining smoke is there is going to dissolve out. So with a little bit of luck, we might have something that already looks pretty good that we can uh, we can use. And I'm keeping all of this very low resolution for a reason. Now, obviously, if you want to have really high resolution, you can up the divisions. And you could use noise as well, but it significantly slows things down. So for the sake of the video, I'm leaving these off. But for a final uh, final simulation, rather, you could use those yourself and see how, how it goes. So I'm going to let this run through one time just to kind of see if our dissolve settings are working properly. And then we got to test it out with shading as well. But it should be OK once we don't see it in the viewport anymore. So let's see, there we go. So now you can see the smoke sort of pours out and then dissolves away. And after a whole number of frames, there's absolutely no smoke left anymore. So that's really good. That's exactly what we want. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to do one more thing, and I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'm going to set this up to maybe be a little bit crazier and a little bit smaller. And what I'm just going to do is type a minus here. And that way, uh, it's going to move forward. And we just get a little bit more twisting in the smoke maybe a little bit slower, and then have this one maybe twist a little bit faster, for example. There we go. And uh, let's see, read the data, and let's set this to 128 uh, divisions. So we have a little bit more detail and something a little bit more fun. So I'm just going to hit bake and then speed up the video real quick. So. Now that that has um, simulated out, you can actually have a look at it. And you can see there's all sort of stuff going on. But the simulation itself uh, is just what we need. So we can actually bring this back into Blender now. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a collection called this simulation. And let's clean this up. And it looks like I made a spelling mistake here. So that was the big turbulence and the small turbulence. There we go. And let's throw all of these into the simulation and turn that off. Um, so what we're going to need to do now is actually bring in the uh, VDB itself. And the way we do that is by adding a new volume object. We can actually hit import open VDB. And now we still have that cache fluid uh, folder from earlier, which I can delete because we didn't actually do anything with it. 
There we go, because we put it in the cache folder. And now depending on which version of Blender you're using, uh, if you're using 2.83, this is gonna look slightly different. So I'm using 2.9 here, and you'll see I have one single um, set of data, which is a VDB sequence of 300 frames, and it's just called fluid data. Now in Blender 2.83, and earlier, um, what's going to happen is it's going to separate out all the channels. So you'll see density, velocity, um, that kind of thing. But really, uh, you could just bring in the density channel. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to bring in this one and use the density channel. Now, one more thing I want to add is if you use the noise option to generate a higher resolution smoke simulation by um, adding in the noise, you'll have a um, noise folder here that you can use as well. And you'll have to look at the name of the channels uh, that are in there. I believe it's called density noise. So you might have to change a few things, but I'll mention that in just a second as well. So that said, let's import this. And um, this is what I was talking about earlier with using adaptive domain. Uh, by turning it off, we have a fixed size domain and the um, zero point is putting being put in the bottom, uh, what is it, left corner. So what I can do is because I know this is 10 by 10 by 10, I can set these to minus five and now will be in the middle of my scene back to where I simulated it before. Now we don't really seem to see anything. Um, and that's because we still need to add some, uh, some materials and things like that to have a look at it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually add in a light source. I'm just gonna add in an area light and maybe set that to 100. And you can use both EV and Cycles to render it. EV is going to be a little bit quicker. Um, cycles is going to be a little bit slower. I'm going to use Cycles for this, but the um, it comes down to the same thing, really. So uh, it's your choice to see what you want to use. Now, i turn it off here, and you can see there's a little bit already going on. But really what we want to do is create our own, um, our own material here. Let's call this Volume. There we go. And um, what immediately happens is it's going to grab the density attribute. And you can see here we have all these channels. So again, um, if you're using the noise setting, this might be called density underscore noise. If you're using Blender 2.83, unfortunately, you have one single uh, VDB per channel. So this is why I'm showing this in 2.9, because we actually have a lot here that we can use. Now, not all of these are useful, but you can see you can set them to anything. So let's set this to something kind of crazy have a look. Um, let's set this to velocity, for example. And you're going to get really weird looks, but uh, there we go. Now you can see um, the density is being grabbed from the velocity channel. Now I just want to keep using density for now, and I want to set the density up higher to maybe, say, 100, and we can just give this smoke a little bit of thickness. Now let's go back to our area light and really crank that up. Um, and now we get a smoke simulation that looks kind of okay. And we'll get into the shading of it a little bit later. But first, what I want to do is actually set up the loop. So we've got this first one now set up. And if we play, unfortunately, it doesn't always show up in the viewport. It's kind of a little bit buggy sometimes. So let's go to material preview. There we go. Now we can actually see it. You can see it playing. Now, because this smoke is dissolving out, what we can now do is bring in a second volume object and import the same data again. There we go, and make sure that the second object is set to minus five, so it matches. And now if we offset the frames by, let's say 150, we might have to set minus 150, no, there we go. And we give it the same material, all this volume. Now what we're gonna get is, we get the last 150 frames of the first simulation, and then we're gonna get the first 150 frames of the second simulation. So if I set my end to 150 now, you're going to see if I go to the last frame and the first frame, they're quite similar, but they actually animate over top of each other. So now you get a looping simulation. Now, unfortunately, this is very hard to preview in, uh, in the viewport because of viewport denoising. But basically, this is the way to set it up. So we've got one that's been offset and one that's, been, that's regular. And this is a really great use of VDB caches. So um, one last thing I want to show you, just to show it in cycles rather than in EV, um, but again, you can do the same thing. You can use all of these different attributes as well to uh, shade the smoke, so you can have a lot of fun with these. And the way to do this is that by bringing in the attribute node and typing any of the names of these channels. So for example, let's have a look at um, just the velocity channel. So, velocity. I'm just going to type it in, velocity, there we go. And 
you piped it into the color, um, not much will show up because uh, these are really kind of crazy channels. So we pipe this into the color, for example, and take away this viewer. Now you'll see the velocity of the smoke in the X, Y, and Z channels. So that means we could even split these up. So we could separate X, Y, and Z. There we go. So now you can see that's everything in the X channel. everything in the Y channel and everything in the Z channel. And depending on what you're doing, uh, this is gonna look okay. But I don't really wanna use this. I really just wanna use the density parameter again. But that was just to show you what you can do with this. And it's gonna give you some really weird results if you try and put this in the viewer node. So if we just add density in here, into the color, how are you gonna see? This is actually a factor. Now what's gonna happen is the density um, is very low. So almost zero at the start and uh, one towards the end, or the other way around, depending on how you want to look at it. But basically what we can do is now pipe this into a color ramp and we get a way to color our smoke in a mysterious and funky way. So you can really ramp this down and now you can see anything with a low density is gonna be uh, red and anything with a higher density is gonna be white. And you can really have fun with this and really color the smoke in interesting ways. <clears throat> and because it uses that density channel, it will sort of change as the smoke changes density as well. Maybe bring down the overall density a little bit so there's a little bit more light going through the smoke. So that looks pretty cool. Um, let's add a camera to our scene real quick. There we go. And now we have little smoke simulation that's been looped. So let's go to the last frame and let's go to the first frame. You can see there's just a little bit of movement in there and they should loop perfectly. I'll, um, I'll provide a, a final sort of render of this real quick. Now the resolution is a little bit low, which is why we're getting these blocky, sort of blocky looking images. But this is just to show you how it works. Now, if you want to speed up, and this is specific to cycles, uh, you're rendering a little bit. What you could do is go into your volume setting and um, for the viewport, for example, you could set the, the uh, what is it, step rate a little bit higher. And that basically means the steps of um, cycle sort of tracing through the volume will be bigger. You'll lose a little bit of detail, but it'll render a lot faster in the viewport. You could also bring down the max steps and um, maybe look at your light paths as well and bring down the amount of volume steps. Now this will change the look of the volume a little bit, but it might render it out a little bit faster. So you can see, if I put in more light path steps, the light will scatter through the volume longer. But it will take a lot longer to resolve and it'll be a bit noisier. If I bring this down, you'll see that some of the parts will be darker, but it will run quicker. So um, yeah, those are just some very quick settings to optimize. But yeah, basically that's how you loop a smoke simulation in Blender. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and look forward to more loophole videos in the future. Um, I want to try and cover a whole range of topics, but this seemed like a good first one to start with. So yeah, with that said, uh, happy looping and see you next time.